Hi, good morning, good afternoon, depending on what part of the country you are located. Thank you so much for joining my live webinar. If you are bilingual and want to become an entrepreneur, then this training is for you. I am going to get started here very, very quickly. So if you join me after um, and you miss some of the topics, then you will be able to um, get some of these uh, recordings down the line, okay? So my name is Fabiola. I am a professional Spanish interpreter. And I have been working as a professional interpreter now for over 18 years. So many of you who are here, you are, again, bilingual, and you want to start your own business, either as a freelancer or as a language agency. Now, moving on to the next topic. Okay, so I'm going to share here real quick with you. Let me see if I can... Uh, I'm going to share my screen and please bear with me. Okay, so here I am. I'm, I'm hoping that you are able to see this. Okay, so that is me. Again, I am here at the state capitol here in California. I am actually uh, providing interpreting services for a nonprofit organization. I do these every single year. They're very, very fun. On this slide, you will see my beautiful daughter. Her name is Chloe. She is now eight years old, and this is me. So for many of you who don't know, I actually just graduated last year from high school. Yes. So. I don't have a college degree, I don't have a business degree, all I have is business experience and qualifications. Um, so everything that I start, I make sure that I always finish. And it took me years after years, but I accomplished my goal. And while I was actually working um, on my high school uh, diploma, I was also going to college uh, for uh, you know some criminal justice uh, classes that also helped me uh, pursue my career as an interpreter okay so here I am again okay so let's move on um, what you will get in my trainings in my trainings I offer from start to finish literally i will be sharing the inside secrets of everything that i've learned along the way everything that i did to start my business and career as a professional interpreter so again for those of you who do not know me i am fabiola i'm a spanish interpreter and i've been doing this for over 18 years um so the way i started was i think many of you uh, can relate is that you know we either helped our friends our family communicate in their own language either for medical appointments legal appointments etc so one day while at the hospital waiting for my mother to be seen i saw three people interacting in a different language so i waited until they were done i approached the gal asked her what she was doing she said oh i'm an interpreter i'm a russian interpreter so it was something that caught my eye, my interest. So as soon as I got home, I started doing my research. I did my research to find out about the industry, you know, what it required and whether or not I could pursue this as a career. And fast forward, 18 years later, um, here I am. Okay, so um, I'm going to be going back and forth. So within three months, I was able to land contracts um, with Sutter. Kaiser, the county, state, federal, and this was not in my plan, believe it or not. You know, I just wanted to be a freelancer. I just wanted to help people using my bilingual skills. 
So I started off the first three months basically um, helping people with their immigration documents, translations of those documents, as well as assisting them um, for their immigration appointments. From there, you know, I started getting referrals. People started seeing how I worked. And so that's how my business started to grow. So within those three months, you know, I started getting contacts uh, from customers that were interested in other languages. Again, did my research, did my due diligence, and I started to recruit and train um, interpreters in other languages. So I built this uh, cadre of interpreters of over 2,500 freelance interpreters in over 150 languages. And not only that, but not only was I providing services here locally in Sacramento, California area, but I started to branch out. I started uh, to provide services in Colorado, in New York, in uh, Oregon, in Texas, and you name it. I mean, I just have a passion for business. I love what I do. I love helping others and I want to help you get your business started. So... First and foremost, if you have not gone to my website at www.fabiolavalencia.com, that is fabiolavalencia.com, please make sure that you visit my site, download your freebies, register for my groups, for my podcast, my YouTube accounts. I provide a lot of free information that I know for a fact it's going to help you. Okay, because it's gonna take more than just being bilingual to start your own business. It's going to take a lot of sales, marketing, accounting, negotiation skills, you name it. So a lot of the trainings that are out there are only gonna train you to become certified either in the medical industry, court, or federal. So being certified is great and I highly recommend it but if you have no hands-on experience, you're setting yourself out for failure. Why, what do I mean by that? Well, believe it or not, for one, I am not court certified, medical certified, administrative certified. I have not had the opportunity to um, take on these tests and take on the challenge on getting certified. Why? Not that I don't need it and not that I don't want it, but I've just been so busy and with business with my current customers that sometimes I feel like oh, why even do it if I, you know I have such high volume of customers that already know that I'm capable and competent of doing the work again I'm not trying to discourage you from getting your certification because I highly recommend that okay so what I mean is that you need to make sure that you get trained in vocabulary vocabulary terminology depending on the areas that you're going to be working in. So if you want to pursue a career as a medical interpreter, get yourself trained in medical terminology and vice versa with, you know, court interpreting. Now, what do I mean by terminology? Because a lot of you interpreters think that just because you speak a second language that that automatically makes you an interpreter. No, 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 it does not. Okay, don't get yourself in trouble uh, taking on assignments that you are not familiar with um, regarding the terminology, the processes, etc. Believe it or not, um, I think I'm one of a few interpreters that's able to provide medical, legal, administrative, federal conference interpreting because throughout all these years, I continue to train myself in terminology. I make sure that I prepare myself prior to each assignment with the terms and get to know each particular company that I'm providing services for. So I, hi I highly recommend that. Okay, two, you need to make sure that um, you understand your role, that you understand what you're providing. It's not just showing up to the assignment and okay, here I am, I'm gonna start you know, providing these services. No ma'am, that's, or no sir, that is not, it takes more than that, okay? There is so much business out there for those of you who want to become interpreters. I can't even, you know, explain it to you. There's a lot of work. So please, please, if you're serious about taking on uh, this career, you want to pursue it, please make sure that you visit me online. Okay. So again, with what I provide and what you are required to have, first and foremost, again, 
be fluent in the English language and the target language. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading, um, you know, and I'm going through some, some of my steps because I don't want I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. Okay, you got to be able to convey um, completely and accurately all of the information received in both your the English language as well as the target language. You need to be able to work independently, work um, well with others, have great customer service skills. That is a must, great customer service skills. You can't show up every day to an assignment with this bad attitude and it's just like, oh my God, another day. Okay. So if you're tired, make sure that you reject the assignment. Don't take on an assignment if you don't feel comfortable. Don't take on an assignment just because you want to make another dollar. Because again, you are setting yourself for failure. Okay. Um, always arrive 15 minutes prior to each assignment. Um, it helps you better prepare yourself. Um, you know, do the pre-session and gather much as much information as you can to be able to conduct these um, interpreting assignments. Again, and I keep saying again, sorry. <laughs> also in my trainings, I provide you with sales and marketing uh, tips as well as procedures, how to market yourself, where to look for business, where to register uh, for assignments, who to work for, who not to work for, because believe it, in the 18 years I've developed a list of um, reputable agencies and, that I highly recommend and that are going to appreciate your work and your value. And then those are the ones that are not going to be nickel and diming you, paying you $10, $15 an hour, because th this job requires so much out of you that, you know, $15 an hour, I personally think, unless you're an employee, I think it's very, very low because at the end of the day, if you're freelancing for $15 an hour, by the time you're done and at the end of the year that you're paying your taxes, you're basically making what, $7 an hour, which is nothing. Okay. Especially all those miles they're going to be putting in your car. Um, I will also go over all of the pricing with you. You know, if you want to uh, get certified, where to go, what trainings work, which ones don't. And again, just because I am not certified does not mean that I have not gone through some of these trainings and, and I know which ones work and which ones are going to help you become certified. Because all of these trainings online that help you become certified, they don't provide you with all of the information that I'm going to provide you with, which means what your role is, your introduction, your rules, your code of um, ethics, uh, professional conduct, um, a list of agencies, uh, how to schedule your calendar, how to prepare yourself, um, what assignments are good, which ones are not, uh, dictionaries, notepads, uh, you know, just everything that you're going to need in order to be successful in this industry. Now, again, if you have not downloaded your freebies online, I highly recommend that you do. I have some free tips in there, which, um, you know, provides you with um, understanding the industry, the language statistics per the, um, labor uh, labor board statistics how much you know interpreters are making and I'm just looking here as of 2016 most interpreters are making 46,120 per year and it's growing believe it or not I myself I have the luxury now thank God that I get to work when I want for whoever I want as much as I want and even on slow months I am still bringing in about $5,000 a month, okay? So, I mean, that's not bad money because, you know, those 5,000, believe it or not, it can be on just a few translation documents. It can be on some conference assignments. I mean, I've done a couple of conference assignments where I've, you know, made about $3,000, yes that much. So, but again, it's not about the money. It's about, do
doing something that you love, having a passion for it, you know, enjoying what you're, what you're doing and knowing that you're benefiting, not only benefiting uh, off of it, but more importantly, that you're helping somebody else communicate, that you're bridging that language gap. A lot of people, again, do it for the money. And I think it's the wrong thing. Um, so again, if you don't have any business skills, marketing skills, sales skills, um, accounting skills, no problem. In my trainings, I cover all of that. I will teach you what programs to use, what software to use, where to go, what to do, how much to charge, how to market, how to um, do the outreach so that you too can get your own customers and not always rely on agencies. You know, believe it or not, agencies, you know, go through all of this and it's a lot of work. So when you start saying, oh, well, the agencies are profiting, you know, off of me, well, that's not necessarily true because again as a previous um, agency owner we go through a lot I mean there's a lot of contracting processes a lot of forms that we need to fill out a lot of steps and procedures <clears throat> that we need to um, incorporate not only for uh, the in-house staff but also we need to pass on those um, procedures terms and conditions on to each freelancer there's a lot of um, guidelines that not only the agency has to adhere to, but also the interpreter. But there's limitations because as a freelancer, as a 1099 contractor, we can dictate what you can and cannot do. We can make suggestions, but we cannot dictate it because otherwise you will be classified as an employee. So you got to also make sure that you also um, decide, do you want to be an employee or do you want to be a contractor? Okay. Employees, you know, you have the luxury of working, you know, eight to five or five to whatever time. You may get benefits. You may get, um, you know, certain perks that you don't get as a freelancer. But at the same time, you're not going to have that flexibility, that independence, and you're probably not going to be making as much as a freelancer because, again, a freelancer you have the ability to dictate how much you want to make how much you want to charge per hour, how many hours you want to work, what days you want to work, and so on and so forth. Okay, so on another note, um, things that I cover on my training is how to research the market in your area, because not everybody is in California or in the U.S., setting your goals, marketing yourself, setting your fees, setting your resume either online or offline so that you can either email it or have some online exposure, selling your services, selling yourself, you know, um, helping you create a business plan because I don't care whether you're a freelancer, a big corporation, you need a business plan in order for you to be successful. Also setting your market strategy, you know, uh, your target market, setting up your pro processes and procedures, and overall marketing your services online and offline. Because again, with all this online social media frenzy, you know, there is so much out there, so much competition, and not to say, you know, that it's bad because it isn't. You know, there's work for everybody. You just got to do a little hustling and making sure that you want to do this. Some of the people that I've been training throughout the years have had no experience, what's, no experience whatsoever. So therefore, I've trained them from start to finish. A lot of them are either court certified now, working directly with courts. Some of them are also working uh, with Sutter Kaiser Hospitals. Others are actually even uh, working for, with the school districts, you know, providing IEPs. Uh, for uh, conferences for the LCAP, LCAP DLAC. Um, so I'm sorry if I'm talking a little bit fast, but I, you know, I want to make sure that I give you as much information as possible within the limited time that we have. So um, this past, um, or actually last year, I did um, an interpreter training for a school district, and there was about 60 interpreters 
And believe it or not, some of these interpreters have been working for the district now for like, oh my God, over eight years, I want to say 10 years. And a lot of them were unfamiliar with everything that I provided them with. And I'm going to read off a little bit of stuff um, that, you know, some of the feedback that they gave me. Some of them, you know, just figured, oh, well, I don't think I need to learn all of the terminology because some of it, we're not going to use it. They didn't know the terms for Common Core. There was others that, um, you know, even after five years of, of interpreting, they didn't consider themselves fully trained. And so they felt very uncomfortable. They felt that, you know, they took on this test, an English test, proficiency test, a math test, and they were thrown out to the wolves, which is pretty bad, not only for the interpreter, but more importantly for the parents and the students that are not probably not getting the right information from these interpreters, which is pretty sad. And I want to say that this probably goes along with any other field. There was um, others that wanted to get some more information regarding uh, some medical terminology because sometimes it is used in these uh, IEPs. So, you know, they were constantly um, struggling with that. They didn't know anything about the pre-sessions. They really didn't have a, an interpreter or professional code of conduct to adhere to. They pretty much didn't even have something like this. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little calendar. Um, it's a daily calendar that I have and that I sell online. It's an agenda which has all of the bells and whistles of everything that you need as an interpreter on a daily basis to be able to conduct your business to be able to take on your appointments, your follow-ups, have a go-to place, a one central place, you know, when you're taking your phone calls, when you're um, perusing through your emails, you don't want to be, you know, getting all these little chicken scratches and writing them here, writing them there, and then losing out on all this information. Also in my training, I provide you with this. Okay, these are tips. And I don't know if you can see it, but these are tips on what you need to get your business started. Again, some of these interpreters at the schools were actually also freelancing, but they were unaware. They, for whatever reason, thought that they were employees. And that's where we start getting into trouble, not only us as interpreters, but also with the agencies, because then that's where the conflicts start. In my training, I will cover some of the do's and don'ts in the industry, what the difference between an interpreter and translator. Some of you probably already know. Some of you probably don't even know that because, again, some of these interpreters at the school district were even unaware of the difference. They thought everything was a translator, which it isn't. Also, the difference between simultaneous, consecutive conference and whisper interpreting, and there's other terms as well that you need to be familiarized and also um, train yourself because if you're a consecutive an interpreter and you have no experience in simultaneous interpretation, then let me tell you that if you go on doing certain assignments where the simultane simultaneous interpretation is required, again, you're setting yourself for failure. And if you have not uh, signed up on my link online, you know, you're going to get this. If you sign up, actually, you're going to get this with my picture on it. It's going to provide you with some uh, free information as to who I am, my mission, uh, language statistics, how to start your career. And basically a little bit of history of what and how I started and what you need to become an interpreter. So if you are interested in becoming an interpreter and getting into this billion dollar industry, on the email that you received, you will have a way to either register for four 45 minute sessions directly with me at the low price of 
Yes, that is $200 for 45 minute core sessions. Or if you're on a budget, no problem. Okay, I offer a group, an exclusive entrepreneur group online, which is only $10 a month, where you're going to be able to get some information regarding setting up your social media, your website, certain pros and cons regarding the industry, how to start your own business. <laughs> now, again, you're going to have certain limitations, but I think you'll be a start if you're limited on um, you know, on, or if you don't have a budget, I should say. I also offer uh, for new candidates, I offer a one hour training um, on my website again, for um, and that is $85 per hour. And I will be having some group uh, trainings coming up here soon. So you feel free to um, again register onto my list of introduction to interpreting and you'll be receiving um, some emails once these group sessions go live so that you can register so who needs bilingual services okay law firms hospitals insurance companies investigators real estate agents just about any industry needs an interpreter yes okay also did you think about whether you want to be an interpreter or a translator again this training will cover both so you also have to decide which one you want to do or if you want to do both okay who do you can market to again you can market um, to HR companies, firms, corporate businesses, to, um, you know, there's uh, civil attorneys, or comp attorneys, uh, just about, again, just about anybody. Anybody out there needs our services. I currently have contracts with the county. I still have some state contracts as well, as well as with some school districts. So I keep myself again very, very busy. And I can help you also get certain contracts so that again, more importantly, you're not relying on other agencies who, unless you're registering with about 10 of them, you know, you can have some limitations of work there. So. We don't want that to happen because you're going to spend all this time training, you know, so I want to make sure that we start you off on the right steps. There's a lot of um, language agencies out there. Some I will name here, which is like Karmazi and Language World. Those are two local ones. Um, there's other ones here that um, I'll provide with you if you sign up to my training. Those agencies, they're good, but at the same time, those are the ones that are paying $15 an hour. If you're lucky, they'll pay you $20 an hour. But I go back with, if you're going to be a freelancer, by the time you put all those miles in your car, all the maintenance in your car, you're making about 5 bucks an hour, 7 bucks an hour, which is not recommended. At least I don't. I don't take anything that's not going to be beneficial and that's not going to, um, you know, where I'm not going to make a profit because again, you know, the gas, the time, the hours, um, driving. So for example, myself, I've done a lot of, um, interpreting at some of the prisons. I, again, if you're familiar with the area from Sacramento to, um, for example, San Quentin is about a two hour drive. That's not including what time of day and that's not including traffic. So on a good day, I can do about two, two and a half hours. On a bad day, we're looking at about three, three and a half hours on just drive time. So for those type of assignments, you need to make sure that, you know, you charge for mileage as well as travel time. And you have to kind of either uh, bill it separately or incorporate it all together. A lot of interpreters out there, you know, will charge about uh, on a per hour basis for myself when I have to go out on these long assignments and there's a lot of driving involved, I charge on a half day or a full day. 
So, you know, sometimes I'm not trying to be a diva here, but it's either they take it or they don't. And either I decide to accept it or I don't. And for the most part, again, some of these agencies and the, the majority of my customers, they know that when they contract my services, they're going to get top notch. They know that they're, I'm professional and I'm always on time. And so therefore, they always agree um, and accept my rates, my terms and conditions, which is very, very important. So um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to um, go into the chat box and shoot me some uh, messages there and I'd be more than happy to respond. Otherwise, if you are interested in becoming an interpreter, or if you are already an interpreter and you're maybe struggling in getting clients or you're just not making enough and you are looking for more clients <clears throat> or maybe you don't know how to market yourself or how to promote yourself online, then no worries. Here I am. I'm available either one-on-one -on -one or through my, um, special that I have going on right now and in those uh, trainings one-on-one -on -one trainings we can further discuss and decipher your business your goals what you're looking to achieve what you need help with and so all of the information that I provide to you any resources any products I don't make a dime off of it so I want to make that clear <clears throat> but a lot of the people that I work with are people that I have been using for years, are people that I trust, are people that I know provide with good, good um, services and products, are people that I know are gonna put in 100% uh, of the work, so I will provide you with those resources, so not to worry, you don't have to go here or there, everywhere, to try to get trained, to try to you know do this or try to do that. I am your one-stop shop to help you get started, help you grow, and, you know, start and pursue this career that it's a wonderful career. I love it. I've been doing it for, again, for 18 years. And I went, something that I did not touch on is that I literally went from being a CEO, you know, building my business from the ground up. Unfortunately, when the economy crashed, I was going through a couple of other things that I will share with you personally. Okay. My father was diagnosed with brain cancer. And I also um, was pregnant with my daughter. And uh, I almost lost my daughter, as a matter of fact. And so this business, the, the corporation, was, you know, just like any business, you, it's your baby. And you have to be there if you want it to work for you. I don't care how many steps you have I don't care how you have things um, set up if you're not there things are not going to run the way you want them to run so unfortunately um, I made the decision unfortunately and fortunately okay unfortunately because I you know I had to close it down because uh, of everything that I had going on in my personal life but fortunately because now it allowed me to work directly from home no longer have employees. I do work with a few subcontractors, very few, very limited. I try not to, you know, get into that whole charade again. Not that I don't like it, but it's just a lot of work. So I'm very happy where I'm at right now. You know, I work from home. I get to uh, start when I want to start. I get to work when I want to work. I get to take on assignments when I want to take assignments. So if I decide, okay, well, you know what, this month I want to hustle. I want to fill my whole month, then I do some market, marketing outreach, I contact my customers, and I've, till this day, thank God I've never had any issues booking myself for assignments. And again, I can help you um, do that as well. Um, so, you know, again, I close it down, I'm still working, I still love what I'm doing um, on a much lower scale but it's also allowing me now to continue to train uh, interpreters and entrepreneurs to help them and guide them with their business 
So it just had this opportunity. I, I would not change it even for all that money that I was making back then because I have so much more freedom. I get to go to my children's soccer games, to my son's boxing tournaments, to my daughter's, um, yes, she's a little boxer. Um, she's also doing uh, gymnastics. So I get to do all of that with my children. I get to spend more time with my husband. We do a lot of traveling um, and believe it or not, sometimes, you know, I have uh, translations assignments and my sons have tournaments outside of um, the state um, or the city. And basically I will, you know, take my laptop, take my translations and we're ready to go. So I'm not losing out on business. My customers are not losing out either. And I get to spend time with my family. So I hope that you enjoyed this training. I hope that you will join me on this journey. And I hope that you will not give up, that you will pursue your career as a professional interpreter or as an entrepreneur. So whatever the case may be, make sure that you um, join me and I'm gonna put here briefly my uh, I'm gonna share with you okay so here you are so jot it down that is my email that is my entrepreneur cafe group so small businesses freelancers no matter what type of business what type of product you're selling feel free to join there I have some um, the entrepreneur boot camp again no matter what type of business that you're in this is for you I have the introduction for interpreting and just a quick here um, as you can see, I've done some uh, nonprofit organizations. I've been at the courts, I've been at the hospitals, I've done interpreting for our governors locally and also for um, other governors outside the country. So there is so much out there for you. It's just gonna be uh, dependent upon you on whether you're serious or not, okay? So make sure that you um, visit my website and see you on the other side. Have an awesome day.